This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. Congratulations, it's John and Rachel from Ejaga. Yeah, and 500 episodes, 10 years mm-hmm. doing podcasting. And John jokes that you're like the grandfather of podcasting, but really you're just the guru of all things. Our favorite memory or the best thing this decade with you is every single thing you did for us to make us look better. Videos, mm-hmm. production, all of it. Especially with our lack of technology. So congratulations, awesome cast. Hey, Dave Podner of the Tiny Shutter Podcast, giving congratulations to Awesome Cast on 500 episodes and keeping it not only awesome, but fun and entertaining and informative, which is always a hard thing to do. Again, thanks so much to everyone, Sorg and the entire crew, for keeping it up for 500 episodes and always having that energy, especially live in chat in the Facebook group, 7 p.m. on Tuesday. Hope to see everyone there, and again, congratulations. That's right. It's time to get geeky, get awesome. It is the awesome cast. I am Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter here in the Sorgatron Media Studios compound in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And we're uh, uh, celebrating 500 episodes and over 10 years of the show. Holy crap. I almost swore. I. <laughs> So that's the other show. Um, but uh, And, of course, there's some messages there. We'll have some more messages throughout the show. Thank you, everybody, joining us here live on the chat room and uh, uh, wherever you may be uh, viewing us right now in the live streams or after the fact. First of all, with us, he is a gadget guru of Big Bank International Esquire. He is John Chichilla. How's it going today? Happy 500th. Happy 500th. We've all, we've all upgraded our studio spaces, haven't we? Like, look, you, have, you have your, like... You have a whole different like setup there. Where I'm not a, in the basement a anymore. House. You have a whole different house. <laughs> how many of us? Raise your hands. How many people have moved since the beginning of the show? <laughs> so, I'm probably the only one actually. That way, other than the studio itself, I guess. Also with us, um, um, properly regaled in in uh, party party hat right now. <laughs> the Dutters is with us. Katie's with us. How you doing? Hi. And I'm also wearing a space cat, but you really can't see space Hello, cat. Hello, space well. cat. That's, yep. that's awesome. Space cat in a party hat. <laughs> space cat in a party hat. Bless Fantastic. That. And 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 apparently we have a hundred episode roll with this fellow. Yep. Uh back yep. with us. The the originator, when I'm like, hey, let's start this show. Hey, I have no idea what to call it. And I've been working trying to figure something out for like two weeks. Uh uh, this guy's like, hey, I got a domain name. And <laughs> <laughs> from Portland, Oregon, uh, Rob Rob De La Creta joining us. I'm like so nervous, I forgot how to say your name. Uh, <laughs> you nailed it! Congratulations. <laughs> was that um, the, wasn't it like the first time? The first time we did an episode was right before, and I was like, I don't think I know I've ever said your name as long as we've been talking, because it's like, <laughs> oh, it's Rob, and then I see his name in Facebook, and that's it. <laughs> yeah. Uh huh. Yeah, it, ha- it happens to the best of them. I actually, uh, when I got married, uh, I was uh, the, the guy who officiated my wedding was uh, is a very good friend of mine. And it wasn't until he went to say my last name that he realized he had never, ever said my last name. And so then he mispronounced my last name while, like, when he announced us when he, like, officiated my wedding. So, I like that. What, what? Uh, don't. You did better than he did, so fantastic, fantastic. Well, that's okay. I think we. I visited somebody in New York City, not knowing what their last name was, and realized how do I know what bell to ring when I get to his apartment? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> like I think I was on the way, and I whatever MySpace Facebook we had, I'm like, dude, what's your last name? Just in case I need it. Also, when I went to Thailand, I realized I didn't know the real names of the people I went with because they were wrestlers. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like. I need to notice when they check on my stuff in China, guys. Okay, so let's like 
I, just to be sure. Like, <laughs> so, um, anyways, no, Rob, and so Rob, Rob, just real quick before we get into the business, like w- giving people quick, quick summary, like, what are you up to? What are you doing in Oregon these days? Are you doing the same kind of stuff? And what is that stuff for the, for our newer listeners? I'm doing, um, the exact same thing I was doing last time I was on the show in, in a, in a different capacity. So, uh, for, yeah, yeah. So for nine years, uh, I've been wow. with Ion Tank, uh, which is still located in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Um, Ion Tank is a group of miscreants making, um, it's, it's hard to describe. We'll call it interactive art. Uh, we do large scale installations for corporate centers, museums, um, recently cancer centers, um, hospitals, trade shows. Um, we do big blinky things. We've done 30 foot tall trees with LEDs and branches that move and articulate. We've done, um, there's something, I actually have a bunch of stuff on the floor here for, uh, called the digital campfire, which is a collection of 56 tablets and phones that you can interact with. Um, we do like sculptural quality, weird combinations of, of technology and materials for pretty much anybody who wants them. So uh, we have a full fabrication studio in Pittsburgh. I moved to Portland two-ish years ago, um, but I am still a director. I run the company with uh, one other guy. Um, and we have, uh, I think we have like 12, 12 or 16 employees at the moment. Uh, and I am still director. It was actually worked out really well uh, because I'm mostly administrative, managerial. Uh, I work with all of our West Coast clients. Um, so the time zone thing worked out really well. Uh, I'm just our only, up until uh, recent global situations, our only remote employee. <laughs> and, and, and had to change that up real quick. In, in, in you know, and again, I think we've, we've, we've featured so much, talk about so much of it on the show, especially when you're still you know, a regular on here, like featured in Wired, featured at South by Southwest, like your stuff is, I'm sure I've seen some of it since and haven't realized it. So probably, yep. <laughs> uh, I, I miss the old tours. I miss the old tours of what you guys are working on down there. So um, we did, we did update, update our website since the last time I was on the show. So you feel like oh, fantastic, <laughs> fantastic. Uh, just for the occasion, right? Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, but anyways, this is the awesome cast. Check out everything at awesomecast.com. You can email Email us awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com. Uh, and nope, nope, that's the wrong show. Nope, that's the wrong show. You can <laughs> check out uh, all that in uh, all the past episodes over there. Please follow us on Twitter. Please follow the Facebook page and group. We are live on the Facebook. We are live on the Twitch, on the YouTube, on the on the uh, Periscope. And we got about all those. I'm having trouble with the Periscope. Uh, getting those chat rooms up there. So if you guys are anywhere, but the main chat is, of course, usually happening over on the Facebook. So please, a lot of people are joining us. Uh, uh, right now, including hey, Uncle Crappy's hanging out in there. My mom is hanging out in there. It's more than that. Chachi, Potter, uh, and everybody else hanging out. Thank you, everybody, joining us on this very special occasion. Uh, and also, uh, please, uh, of course, subscribe to us on your podcast catcher, wherever that is, and wherever you might be catching us. If it's live, uh, please hit a share, hit a like, hit a heart, whatever the case may be, uh, so you can share the love of the awesome cast or write a review and hit share if you're listening on the podcast here later as well and we do go live every tuesday at 7 p.m eastern time thank you to our audio partners the 405 media.com and post industrial audio at postindustrial.com uh two sites that have been helping uh spread the word of the awesome cast uh out there as well as with some other great podcasts thank you to our patreon supporters at patreon.com slash awesome cast our friends at the coffee club level matt weller john DeGore, and john carmen and our friends at the fan of the show level michael fedor Katie's favorite fedor, uh, pjhmuseums.org, and our newest uh, uh, Patreon supporter, Dave Potter of the Tiny Shutter Podcast. Uh, you guys support the show, too. Patreon.com slash awesomecast. So, I, you know, usually I try to, like, maybe, hey, what's the awesome thing of the last 10 years? But there's so much, like, kind of news since WWC and everything just dropped. I think we're just going to do it normal-ish for the most part. Uh, so uh, let's get into our awesome things of the week and of course as i mentioned kind of the big stuff is kind of that wwdc action there and uh uh, chilla i think you got some uh some action from there so 
so one of the things I'm always interested in is a lot of the accessibility features. Um, so mm -hmm. I, I do deal with accessibility related technology in, in my day to day. And it's always interesting to see what Apple has tucked away in accessibility. Um, one of the features is the back tap feature. So you can tap on the back of the phone um, and you can actually set double tap and triple tapping. Um, and you can trigger different custom shortcuts as well as other system actions. So if you think about shortcuts, and I don't know if you've used it, where you kind of create a macro or you do a number of things with a with a with with an app or a trigger, um, you can now do that by just tapping the back of your phone. Um, I don't have it loaded because I don't have a dev account anymore, um, but I have seen this obviously on in, in Gadget. Um, and I have used features like this in the past, so it's pretty cool. And then the other one that they had listed coming out of accessibility is sound recognition. So whether it's a baby crying, a smoke alarm, water running, um, you can actually set it to notify you, which I thought was a pretty cool feature, um, especially those um, who may be deaf or hard of hearing um, or visually impaired, having a identifier to know what's going on around you is key hmm. Hmm. it's a it, it's a it, it seemed like a lot of little stuff today right uh, like like i was far too excited when i saw widgets in the uh catch-up <laughs> video well i figured i figured you wouldn't be so much for the widgets as you would being able to set like your default browser and mail app um i feel like well it, it, i feel like i've gone around that for the most part, but uh, it's that last little annoyance, I guess, right? So, you know, especially when, like, there's a weird thing where if you clicked a Twitter link at Facebook, it would, like, it would error, and, like, you couldn't figure out, you couldn't make it go somewhere else, so I literally couldn't, like, it, it you know, it, you wouldn't, you can't get a, a link except for, like, the Facebook version of the link, I think, and it was, like, everything on our group for Wrestling Mayhem Show was getting screwed uh, from me seeing it on my phone for some reason. So, I mean, other than that, but uh, no, it was it was worth it. We'll, we'll get more into WWC later, but those are some pretty cool things I didn't catch on uh, the uh, hypercut, I guess, of it. So, well, let's stay on the um, uh, app side of things. Uh, Katie, you got a cool little app in here. Yeah, it's Animal Crossing. Oh, is it? <laughs> I thought, okay, no, no, no. I saw a travel guide, and I was like, uh -huh. oh, I mean, she's looking to get out a little bit more now that, now that she's you know through through all of her uh, treatments, right? Nope, I snuck it in with AC8NH travel guide oh. it's animal crossing new horizon oh oh i got you now <laughs> you bamboozled me i did i bamboozled you been bamboozled so th this is uh, an animal crossing app and it costs four dollars and i'm willing to spend four dollars on an animal crossing app mm -hmm. of this magnitude so what's really cool about this app is a lot of the apps you're seeing are like tracking turnip prices because it goes into the data of the game and figures out what you know your process you know what your particular game, um, the way things go. And, um, they, but this also lists all the bugs and fish that are available during each time of year. Um, and also tell you, it helps you track like your daily tasks, like go find so many fossils. Like if you find three fossils or, um, try to just like, if you can kind of set it, talk to so many of your neighbors, uh, you also can keep track of your neighbors, which is pretty cool. And so you'll know which uh, fish you've caught or which uh, bugs you've caught, which is neat. And then a lot of the items that are available at different times of year, because not everything is available uh, all year round. So that kind of gives you an ability to see that. And sometimes you'll, you'll see an item and you'll be like, oh, I wonder if it actually, you know, is this, what is this thing? And you can look and see what the item is. So it combines a lot of stuff that you essentially spend time Googling <laughs> into an app. Well, and it still tracks your turtle prices. Uh, so, so this is uh, this is iOS app. It's three ninety nine. Mm -hmm. I'm also noticing this note uh, on the page uh, for on the App Store preview, number two in reference right now. Yep, in this the is reference, a reference guy. in the reference category on 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 uh, the App Store. Fantastic. <laughs> so, so have you used it? Have you used it to kind of uh, you know effectively island hop? I guess. Yeah, I like the task, mm -hmm. the ability to uh, keep track of your daily tasks. I'm like, oh yeah, I forgot to do that thing. And then it reminds me to do that. And I like to look up the items, too. This is a shout out to Diggy, because Diggy definitely pointed me in this direction. Um, Diggy is definitely one of my buddies in the game. <laughs> where we send <laughs> each other for stuff. Hey, I'm looking for this. Can you find this? 
And, uh, but he was the one who introduced me to this app. Cause I was like, I want to turn up tracking app. And he's like, Oh no, I get something better for you. And then it's this. And like I said, it's a pretty app too. It's really streamlined and it's easy to look at. And it's, it's heavy. I like it. I actually really like it. It's nice to look at. Too. There you go. Be careful. There are in app purchases about tips and such. It looks like so. Yeah. I haven't really come across too many, but mm. But yeah, you can keep track. But it tells you like all the things that are out there. So like I said, it saves you a step from Googling sometimes of what <laughs> something looks like or what something does mm -hmm. or, you know, the different kinds of wallpaper. Do I want to wait out and see if I find this other wallpaper? Will this be available now? Awesome. ACNH Travel Chat. I wonder if they're allowed to use uh, Animal Crossing in the name at all. Probably not at this point. Yeah. yeah. That's why it's sneaky in a reference yeah. guide. It has nothing to do with games. Nope. Awesome. Go check that out. It's on the App Store. Uh, Rob, I, I I see that you like wise devices as well. Uh, I do. I um, there's there's. I saw that you talked about the the band last week. Was that last week? I yes. Think? Uh, last couple of weeks. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I have one of those. Um, it's the only smart watch thing that I have. Um, I have opinions about it, but. Uh, yeah, Wise is doing a lot of cool, very cheap stuff. Um, the band being one of them, they had the scale. They were also selling face masks, because why not? Mm -hmm. um, and today they released um, their outdoor camera, which is something that people have been clamoring for for a very long time. Mm -hmm. I, uh, here at the compound, have one, two, three... Uh, I have like six or seven wise cameras, I think. <laughs> yeah. um, mostly uh, because I don't, I don't trust myself. So like I have, um, I have one in my garage to let me know if the garage door is left open. Mm -hmm. It's one of the many ways that I could be when I, when I put all the pieces together and I say them out loud, I sound psychotic. Here's the thing. When you open my garage door um, via smart opener, um, or using anything um, throughout all of the Alexas in my house, uh, lady, ladies and dudes, sorry. Uh, <laughs> she, uh, she will say the garage door is open no matter what time of night it is or whatever, because if somebody happens to open my garage door and it's not me, I would like to know that. Mm -hmm. um, and then every 30 minutes after the garage door is left open, I get a text message telling me that the garage door is open. Uh, it's a minor annoyance because sometimes I just work in with my garage door open and that's fine. But outside of that, it means that if I forget, I can't get that far away from my house before I fix this. Whether I like, you know, uh, the thing can happen if you uh, go to close your garage door, you drive away, it bounces off the sensor, it opens back up huh. and then you're down the street and you didn't think about it. So it's, it's just like an easy reminder. So on top of that, I also, uh, if I'm out camping for the weekend or something, and I just want to make sure that like nobody managed to get in my house without setting off the security system or anything like that, um, I can always just turn on the camera in my garage, make sure the door is actually closed, um, and uh, make sure everything is hunky dory. Uh, so yeah, and I have a bunch outside. I've been doing the outside thing with the old Wise Camps for a minute. Um, you can get, so for anybody who doesn't know, these are 25 bucks a piece for the non-outdoor version, for the indoor version, which is why they're so popular, because they're dirt cheap. The quality is amazing for how cheap they are. Um, the cloud service is free, and you put a little SD card in it, um, so that in addition to being able to stream all the stuff from wise.com, um, in the event that none of that is working, it also stores all the video on the device itself. They are not rated for outdoor use, um, but as Amazon will tell you, uh, you can certainly use them outside. You can use them in super hot weather, super cold weather. You can get them mostly wet. Um, you can buy little enclosures for now as cheap as $5 a piece, wow. piece to attach them to the outside of your house. Yeah, they're so cheap. They're way cheaper than when I bought them. And uh, so people have been saying, we really want an outdoor camera because... Um, these are powered over USB, little USB micro. Um, and so I have one installed in the driveway. So I had to run a 50 foot long USB extension cable um, up in my attic and do the whole thing so I could power it, make it nice and all that, um, which is the biggest concern about outdoor aside from it being um, resistant to the elements. So they have answered our calls. Uh, there is now the Wisecam Outdoor which is IP65 rated, meaning that it can be rained on. Um, it won't work underwater, it will but you shouldn't. Uh, 
and uh, and it'll be fine. And now they can legally stand behind it. So if it fails in in poor weather situations, uh, that's that's their problem. So it's battery powered. Um, obviously, with a camera like this, you don't want it checking and scanning all the time because it's going to kill the battery. Mm -hmm. So they've used uh, a PIR motion detection system. So it's looking for uh, a thermal signature before it will record anything, uh, which saves battery life exponentially. It has two 2,600 milliamp hour batteries. I don't remember how long it lasts, but I think they, they said originally they were shooting for a month. Obviously, that will depend on how much motion there is in front of it. So that'll be, that'll be seen. So the way the system works, which I, I think is pretty interesting, um, instead of the normal Wise Outdoor storing um, on a local SD card, the starter kit, which you can get from their website for the low cost of $50, I think, um, is the Wisecam Outdoor and a little sync station. And so it's a little wireless station of its own, of its, a little wired, wireless network of its own accord. Um, so it's transmitting to the station. And the station inside your house is where you're going to have that SD card. So if somebody sees your camera and steals it, they didn't steal all your footage. Um, you still mm. have it inside your house which is there's a lot of people who use these for security. And that is an excellent feature where a lot of people prefer an NVR because the data is always stored inside your house. You can always protect it. Um, also, I'm curious to see, um, I forget what the protocol is. If you're a security nerd um, or you like wise, but you hate the idea of you like the price of wise, cause that's what we all like about it. Um, but you don't want the, um, the cloud functionality, because you're worried about it being out of your control, um, there is a way that you can use WiseCam. You can reflash the firmware to use it with an NVR system locally on your local network and nice. not have it sent out to the cloud. You can check out the WiseCam Reddit for that. That's a, um, that's across the the uh, for for original WiseCams, right? Yeah, that's for the okay. original WiseCams. Um, they also um, did a thing for the pandemic where because everybody's remote working, they uh, offered another version of the firmware to turn it into a basic ass webcam. Just normal. Right. We, we talked about that a few weeks ago. So that that's handy, especially since we can't find yeah. as we're finding, uh, you know, good Logitech cameras with everything going on right now. So I right. Think, yeah. So yeah, it was kind of kind of amazing. Um, so the other thing to know about the wise cam outdoor is they have uh, I forget, they call it like adventure mode or something stupid like that. But what you can do, which I think is, I think it's interesting. I feel like it's like right on the edge of useful for me. I'm not sure yet. Because again, I already have all these cameras mm -hmm. everywhere. Mm -hmm. And I don't have to worry about batteries ever. They just work. So I have no reason to get one of these. Um, but uh, they have offline video recording in that. If you, the example they give, you go camping and you want to do like time lapse of your website or, or your website, your website, your campsite, time lapse of your campsite or uh, something like that. You don't need the base station that has the SD card in it and all that stuff. You can sync it directly with your phone. It'll store everything locally. You can look, it's a lot like a GoPro if you've ever used a GoPro yeah. um, as, as like a recording device. It's that exact same kind of thing where it can just run off the battery, sit in a tree, <clears throat> and then you can sync it with your phone. Um, if you are something for me, so I, uh, I camp a lot, I motorcycle camp a lot, I go hiking, I do all this stuff. I end up in situations where I have uh, a motorcycle packed with gear sitting in a parking lot with like a duffel bag on top. And like, I don't care what padlocks you have, you know, locks are only for the honest people. Uh, and, uh, so somebody could like grab my stuff and run with it. And as much as like seeing it gone isn't useful, you need to see it happen. You could very easily put these, put one of these in your car and like check on it while you're in the restaurant or whatever else you're doing. Um, so they're stretching their wings. It's very interesting. It's still exceedingly cheap. Um, it's currently like a, they kind of do these, like, uh, you may have mentioned these like short term backer program things. So you're not going to get it next week but you will get it in August if you uh, go to order it today. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's what uh, a couple of us got our first ones through that program. Maybe um, let's see. Uh, uh, Mike, Mike pound has a, has a wise cam. One of the originals looking through his uh, window to his porch and front walk. That's what I do. I have just out my window to the porch and I've been trying to figure out that to cover more of since we kind of extended our property in the last couple of uh, years. 
um, mm-hmm. and trying to co- cover that, make sure nobody's doing anything weird over there. Uh, also, Ponder's uh, using it as well, just, again, see if the, if the garage door is open with live video. So we have two here in the studio. I move things around, especially when you know things going on. There was kind of some threat of some shenanigans over the last couple of weeks with everything. So um, and and also, do you pay for the the clouds like the the full motion cloud storage at all? I, I don't pay for it. I think I um, they they did a thing where they were like, you already have an account. You get to try it out for X amount of time. Yeah, and I think like the pop up came up. I didn't read the X amount of time. I was like, cool, free feature. And I hit yes. And then it worked for a while and then it like turned off yeah. or whatever. For my use case, um, I'm not super worried about it. So like I have, not to compromise my offsec, but I have one <laughs> on my driveway, um, mostly just to capture, I had, I, had a, I had a dude steal a broken lawnmower from my driveway. <laughs> <laughs> it was really funny because I long story short it's just like with my trash cans mm-hmm. and I was going to have to figure out how to get rid of this thing I thought I like picked up this lawnmower I was going to fix it or whatever it was junk and I was like alright fine it's junk I'll just put it and I had it like tucked behind my trash can and I had like the same day I got that wise cam and I had something in my brain was like you should like don't don't do like the yak shaving exercise where you're like wait for for this day, run the wires, make it pretty. Just like, no, just plug it in somewhere and get it up there. It's fine. You'll, you'll figure it out. And like three hours after I installed this thing, dude's like walking down the street and you see him just make a beeline for my driveway and one smooth motion, take that broken lawnmower and wheel it out of my yard. And I was like, good for you. Buddy. Good for you. Um, but because of the, the way my street is, if I had like motion detection and push notifications turned on. Oh, I would yeah. constantly fly to people and cars, and yeah. I don't need any. Well, and, and and that's us too. So. Yeah, we, we like I put out the front window and I, I turned on like people recognition and uh, and and just like it's there in case somebody does something weird, right? So <laughs> you know, like we 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 had a sign that we set up for. Uh, there was like a fifth grader graduation parade and we put it out and when like I found it in the middle of the street like two hours later I'm like like some kids like mess with this or something it's like it turns out it blew over and I and I actually went through and watched it blow out into the street <laughs> over like the course of an hour or something so but uh no it's it's an awesome thing uh wise cameras a lot of guys, us use it um they've been pretty reliable for me too except I gotta resound every once in a while it seems um so but uh, mm-hmm. I think it's our Wi-Fi. Like it seems like stuff drops off our Wi-Fi every once in a while. So it happens. Yeah, I had one that was. Um, it was. At the, uh, I put one up in my kitchen, uh, and I had one that just like refused to exist for a little while. Right after I installed it, and I was so frustrated because yeah. I had drilled yeah. all. I had drilled holes and like ran wires and stuff. And I'm like, oh, oh, this is why. Why do I do this to myself? So, from that, we I, we spent a lot of time. Like, you work. Like, I mean. We, yeah, we talk about wise all the time on here. Um, so I'm excited because I, I, I think we we officially kind of wheel and dealed this on the show a couple weeks ago. But uh, Chilla, we I traded the old the old uh, VR Samsung setup and uh, got his uh, updated S8 um, and uh, was playing with that. You know, upgrading my VR and, and making sure all the games uh, that I, that I bought on the other one came over to it. Then I'm just like, hey, I wonder. I got that. Chilla, you know you how much you set me up this weekend with that thing? How's that? Because not only <laughs> did you give me like the sweetest trade in the world again, um, it, 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 you recommended that clip from my Xbox controller that I had already been playing like Call of Duty Mobile and games on uh, uh, Apple Arcade for like ever mm-hmm. now. Uh, by the way, Little Orpheus is a freaking phenomenal game on Apple Arcade. That's a whole other story. That'll take me 20 minutes. But um, So I, I, I'm like, I wonder. I hook it up. Because I remembered GeForce Now is on Android, and I had too old of a phone to do it before. So I pulled up GeForce Now, and it's got all my games in there from Steam. Not all my games from Steam, but like, and they had just added like the newer Tomb Raiders and uh, Fire Pro Wrestling was on there. So I got a, kind of a nice collection on there right now. Uh, Rocket League, uh, Brawlhalla, like games like that. Assassin's Creed Syndicate's on there that I randomly got for really, you know, stuff like that. And also, I'm like, I'm curious. I, I downloaded Stadia. Didn't uh, played a little bit just to make sure it worked. Of Serious Sam, that was part of the Stadia Pro that I have a trial for right now. And uh, and I was like, you know, I need to update my uh, uh, Xbox X Cloud 
because I signed up for it when they started like allowing iOS, but that's super restrictive. I never got a notice. I logged in, updated it. And then I'm like, I wonder when say downloaded the app from the Google app store and I can completely use Xbox X cloud on this thing. And huh. it, which isn't, it, it doesn't rely on what games you own or your game pass and gold ownership or anything like that. It's an inc- completely exclusive, you know, untethered other than your save games will be there. Um, set of games while they're in this preview mode. It's in a beta preview kind of situation. And again, you know, just like GeForce Now, it's streaming, it's going up uh, from the cloud, and it is sweet. It is so nice. I was playing uh, Tekken 7. I was playing some Mortal Kombat X. I was playing some Soul Calibur 6, which is a game that's on none of the other services that I pay for on Xbox, which was kind of nice, and I hadn't played it before. Um, it is really cool. And it looks just like, you know, they actually recommend basically what you set, what you set us up with cello, like, Hey, go get your game clip and your Xbox controller and let's do this thing. Um, runs really well on my Wi-Fi. I have like a, a, you know, 50 up and down at home, but, uh, works in my living room because my base is in the basement in the old studio does not work out on my porch, does not work up on the top floor. So I might have to get an Eero or something to be able to play streaming games at some point. But uh, but no, generally just like on that first floor, works like a dream. Work, works really good. Uh, so if you got an Android device and you might be an Xbox person, I'd go sign up for that because I think it's a pretty open thing. Like I said, I didn't even get a notification. It just kind of worked. So download that CD. Um, Microsoft X, what's the official app on that called? The uh, Xbox. What, what is the? I'm trying to find it on my device. What on is on your app store? Is the Xbox Game Streaming app? It's not the. Is it the preview one or is there? A it's a preview. One? It says it is a preview. So download that. It won't, it, it won't let me. Uh, won't let you install it. No, it let me install it. It won't let me sign in. Oh, it might be a Microsoft thing too, because if you have two factor or something. But um, does it give you a notice? Wondering, like when I go to sign in and it says there was an issue signing in, try again later. Okay, they might, they might be. Xbox has been down a lot lately, so. I'm hey. wondering, do you have to have your controller connected with Bluetooth before you start? Uh, yeah, I, I had I'll it. I'll play around with it. Yeah, play around with it, but but you got it. So, um, and you signed up for the, the beta at some point? Yeah, yeah, and I, I never actually got the iOS app. So. Yeah, me neither. So, but but if you get the iOS app, all they have is I think the Halo Master Chief Collection because of restrictions with Apple. So, and you can't get it unless they send you the link on test flight. So, um, so that was my that's my awesome thing, and I'm going to be playing with that. And I love kind of and, and also that app Chilla will also allow you to stream from your Xbox to the phone. Oh, so nice. So you can pull up the Xbox and play whatever on your phone at that point too. So. Um, so yeah, playing with that, th- those are fun, fun things I've been playing with this week. So, wow, we, that was a long, awesome thing. Um, you know, what's also awesome, you know, who's been supporting us most of our 10 years here of the awesome cast is our friends at slice on Broadway, slice on Broadway, Dot com supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza here in Beachview, Carnegie, the East End, and PNC Har- PNC Park. One day, maybe home of the PNC or of the Pittsburgh Pirates. Who knows? I don't know. Maybe this summer. I don't think that's going well, actually, from last I saw. Uh, I don't keep up with baseball. So, um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> what kind of show does this is? Come on. Uh, but anyways, go check them out. Uh, SliceOnBroadway.com. They're still rocking and rolling. And thank you, everybody, for supporting them over these weird times. Uh, the last couple of months here, still see a bunch of people in and out when we're going to pick up our pizza for podcast day or any other time we start drop by and grab some pizza, too. So uh, thank you for supporting them. Hey, we got another round of shout outs here from our awesome friends and co-hosts and, uh, and, and uh, from over the years. So let's go check that out if i hit the right buttons i think i was on the first awesome cast uh i think this means i'm going to be on the 500th awesome cast um i don't know how many times i've been on since then but um the experience is has always been awesome um congratulations especially to to mike and missy uh for keeping this thing going for 10 years it is uh it is one of the joys of the entire internet for me thanks case Hey, awesome cast! It's your friend Georgie. 
just popping in to wish you a happy 500 episodes. Woo! Yay! Maybe you'll put a pickle on it. So congrats to 10 years to Mike, Missy, Dutters, and Chilla, and everybody else that's uh, helped put together what makes Awesome Cast so awesome. 2010 thing here, Nikon D7000. First Nikon to really shoot decent video. 2020 awesome thing. New Tech NDI Tools, which has a virtual input that lets you pipe audio and or video from something like OBS into something like a Zoom call. Congrats to you. <laughs> Cast. <laughs> thank you, Ryan Haggerty, for that. And thank you, Mike Bound, and thank you, uh, Chachi, for that. Uh, so, uh, shouts to Chachi's Put a Pickle on It um, um, show that is doing resoundingly well. He has a he has a, a behind-the-scenes episode he did called Behind the Brian that, uh, that debuted earlier today. I got to see a preview of it. It's freaking fantastic. Um, and thanks, Ryan. So yeah, I, I love that 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 uh, he brought up. Like, well, I guess I guess 2010 would have been like when we were first seeing like this DSLR video situation, right? Well, Rob, Rob and Chilla, you're well. Actually, all of you are photo people on our panel tonight. That I think of. I'm, the, I'm like the least photo person here, probably. Right? Photo people yeah. panel. Yeah, you, you can you can you can take a still of your video. I I mean that's that's I I always feel weird. I go on a video shoot. I'm like the only one without the DSLR. I'm like no, <laughs> I'm like I want a real camera. <laughs> so, I need something that fits on my shoulder. Yeah, no, not a shoulder. I need something with some heft to it, man. <laughs> yeah, just some heft to it. Like a large format camera, you just have everybody out of class. Like, wait a minute, I need my tripod. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, well, I had this this weekend. We had I had my big pan my big Panasonic, you know, uh, 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 camera, and uh, and the, and those Canavixias, and then it was just like a couple guys with like the DSLRs, but with like these big rigs around it, and it just like it's just like that's wild. Uh, but uh, anyways, <laughs> that was his thing. Um, we got a couple of things from our group. I want to roll through here real quick here. And uh, do, 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 there we are. Uh, first of all, Brian shared his awesome thing. It's an inflatable kayak. Uh, it's designed uh, to even take a hit. I don't know where. I guess a kayak would take a hit. Uh, it's very easy to transport, and the only drawback is uh, I feel it's not. It, it it does not go as fast as a traditional kayak. Um, so I guess he's been uh, experimenting with this as well. Um, so that is the, and he's got a YouTube video. It's the Navarro 110. Aqua Glide's Navarro Oh, he's 110. talking to me. There we go. Uh, so the Aqua Glide Navarro 110. So, hey, that's, I mean, I wonder how long it takes to inflate that thing. I feel like I may be the only one who could talk about kayaks. So yes, this is, well, this is, you know, perfect. I have a question. So since you're the kayak expert on the show, is it that big of a deal how fast your kayak goes? Like, are there kayak races or is it, is it a safety thing like to paddle out of danger away from sharks? <laughs> Wait. It's uh, it's kind of all the above. So, um, I'm now looking at the, the aqua glide, uh, fascinating. Um, so yes, there are kayak races. There are many different kinds of kayaks. There are kayaks that are exceptionally long. Mm -hmm. um, kayaks that are like, I don't know, 12 feet long is definitely a thing. Um, and then there are single person, very stout kayaks um, that you might use uh, at McConnell's Mill is actually an excellent place where someone might do um, adventure kayaking. Whitewater kayaking is absolutely a thing, mm -hmm. uh, which is where you might hit something, uh, Mike, if you're curious. Yes, yes. yes. Uh, whitewater kayaking is, is exceptionally dangerous, um, and the ability to uh, navigate, make decisions very quickly, um, have the boat follow your intuition very quickly is very important, and it can actually be a, a life or death situation. Um, kayaks work really well um, in that they don't usually have a huge surface area touching the water, so they allow you to move very quickly. Um, and a lot of people like you really enjoy the, the, even if you're not racing, the lack of effort required to move a kayak can be really nice. Um, I've used inflatable kayaks before and they are kind of slow. If you imagine, um, you know, how sharp corners can exist on, um, 
a fiberglass kayak or a plastic kayak or anything made out of a solid surface, a hard material, you can get things to be uh, very hydrodynamic, get them to really just like skim across the water. Um, whereas if you've ever been in a pool float and you've tried to like push yourself around in the pool, it just kind of like shoves the water out of the way instead of uh, being able to float across it because in order to have that buoyancy in an inflatable object, it either has to have exceptional air pressure, higher than you're probably gonna inflate an inflatable kayak, um, or it needs to be made out of a material that can create a, a, a steeper angle so you're not pushing the water as much as you're going over it. Hmm. Huh. Hmm. <laughs> and that's your kayak science sure. lesson with Rod Bailey Crane. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> we only get we only get this kind of stuff every hundred hundred episodes. Once every hundred episodes, it's like favorite. <laughs> uh, Riz also shared with us. Hey, you know Mixer, that thing Microsoft's been doing to try to take on Twitch. It's it's basically shutting down, and they're uh, uh, just kind of handing everything over to Facebook Gaming right now uh according to these stories that are going around today um and doug brought up an interesting question with that because uh uh ninja the like highest paid twitcher out there um is his payday a guaranteed payday (laughs) i have a feeling he's not getting all of whatever that ridiculous number was at this point because i I, those, those are likely a year by year kind of situation he's got whatever the underside is i'm sure which is probably nothing to sneeze at too um it was i i'm glad i refused to get into mixer <laughs> it was just the uh, kind of add-on on, re- on restream for us and we've had problems with it for months actually so um but uh i i don't i don't know uh, uh, Ch- Ch- uh, chilla you're you're as an xbox person do you ever like find yourself getting dumped into mixer since it's just kind of up front over there <laughs> Because it's on the front end panel, there are times where I'm scrolling around like, eh, I'm going to check out like a game. I'm looking for a game or I'm looking for something. And I, you scroll by and you're like, oh, what's that person doing? Mm-hmm. Like I, I got sucked in there one night before Minecraft Dungeons was released. And there were two British game podcast whatever's mixer people showing like their gameplay and they had a pre-release full full release full pre-released game i mean i actually sat there for a good 20 minutes watching them talk (laughs) and and play um dungeons which is actually what got me to buy it i wouldn't say it's a destination but it's a kind of stumble upon it oh hey yeah this is here but it would be the same i don't care what your broadcast application is whatever they're going to put on that front page Mm -hmm. i'll probably i'll probably occasionally stumble across it see something of interest and then hang out for a couple minutes it's i don't have like the app on my phone i don't watch it anywhere else but based on the fact that it's right there in front of you um it's one of the things that i thought was interesting about the playstation is there's nothing on the menu that's kind of driving that digital content without having to go into an additional application or anything mm-hmm, mm-hmm. maybe they'll replace it with facebook gaming maybe they'll, they'll have an integrated play to to kind of make up for that so um the biggest thing for me is nobody said hey i want to stream my thing on mixer um when we talked about like platforms and stuff so uh and they just think until this week's news i honestly like had never heard of it <laughs> The you must not have an Xbox. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I, I think that's that's all. Between that and the ninja story, that's all anybody would know, you know. So uh well, okay, R.I.P. Mixer. Uh so uh also Dave Potter uh shared a story about uh, this is cool and I can relate to this uh a little bit uh, with you know, I think any media company has been uh kind of uh or media worker has been kind of figuring out what to do like it, there was a pretty good story on 538.com that details an audio um engineer who actually kind of pivoted and started helping churches to um uh, broadcast their sessions so it's a really good read it's in the group we'll of course have it linked in the um in the uh in the uh, notes as well uh so uh, so Rob, have you, so with, with other than the remote work, I mean, you're still building things to go places at this point, right? Like, like that has, that, that part hasn't pivoted so much. That's it's your, super that, weird. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> um, 
So especially in the last couple of years, a lot of our installs have been um, not very small. They've been gigantic. Mm. Um, my last big build was in Tokyo. Actually, I flew back from Tokyo December 20th. So like right before things got real weird. Um, and I remember the last time I was in, in an airport actually uh, was that day. And I remember sitting at SFO and like while I was doing work, um, the like rumblings were just starting to happen. And then like on my way back, things got real serious. So my last time in SFO, I remember like looking around and being like, man, there is nobody here. That's weird. <laughs> I've never seen it that empty. Um, and it, it was like the middle of an afternoon at SFO. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so the projects that I'm still working on have been um, for large architectural builds. One is a, oh, I don't know how many square feet, uh, but many uh, that will be in New York. But the project doesn't open until 2022. Yeah. So bigger, longer, further away things. But even then, in the heart of this, everybody was just like, yeah, we have no idea what's happening. And even though the building doesn't open until 2022, they're working on structural stuff. So they would have yeah. been, yeah. you know, in April. So everybody stops and reevaluates their budgets. So, so uh, as opposed to like, we're, we're, like events got killed for us, right? Like you're, you're working on just, yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, well, I should be, you know, this is what got me out of work in last year. Like, you know, that's like three months of stuff gone, wrestling gone, live event yep. streams gone, conferences gone. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's been interesting to kind of find. I've been sitting here a lot, Rob. I've been sitting here a lot. <laughs> doing that i used to travel like uh i used to go to pittsburgh once a month yeah uh i used to travel to client sites once or twice a month mm -hmm. and um i haven't i haven't traveled this little in um 10 years maybe mm -hmm. i have I have no idea and i i also like um a bunch of my clients like we still have some trade show clients and i was actually going to do something with show clicks um flat bind just like yep yep no. Hey, okay. here, here we are with all this time on our hands, right? Um, Chachi, uh, Chachi said he was supposed to go leave in exactly one week for Japan and Korea. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, consolation prize, it would have been really hot. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Oh, anyways, uh, we got a couple more stories. We definitely want to touch a little more on WWDC um, announcements here. And uh, but uh, in the meantime, hey, uh, we do a lot of stuff here. Yeah, I've been sitting here a lot and uh, helping out clients. And that's with uh, via Psychic Media Services, also ho housed here in the Sorgatron Media Compound. I don't know why I say compound. It's really just one room. Uh, but <laughs> uh, it's just one large room, really, that uh, houses our studio equipment and desks. But um, anyways, uh, eventually I'll open this curtain again. I'm, I'm still afraid of people, though. Uh, but uh, <laughs> but we do a lot of stuff over the Kick Media Service, and I have been getting out of the house. We've been doing a lot of work uh, with our friends. Everything from uh, we were doing like helping influencer Instagram videos this last week uh, to, of course, church uh, uh, streaming build outs. Uh, and uh, uh, geez, what else have we done? Social media videos. Uh, we were on a, a film set on Saturday doing some incredible work. Uh, so uh, go check out what we're doing over there. Psychicmediaservices.com. Let us be the sidekick in your superhero project. Of course, it's not just the video work and everything. It's the social media website work. Missy and uh, Katie do some awesome stuff around that as well helping some people out so go check out psychicmediaservices.com all right this is the last one well okay this was the last planned one and then i think i got something special for you guys at the end of the show that came in during the show so so don't let me um forget about it uh but uh this is our uh, another batch of shout outs from our good friends and uh let's uh let's get started here with our uh, buddy doug Congratulations, awesome cast, on their 10th anniversary. This is Doug Durda from YinsLoveBBQ.com, YinsLoveBarbecue, and that thing that used to be called Should I Drink That? Really proud to see you, uh, to see you guys hit this milestone. Let's face it, everyone comes to listen to Dudders and, and her stories. Uh, Chilla's tech tips are awesome. And Sorg, well, he gets pizza. So I guess that's a plus. Congratulations. Uh, proud of your accomplishments. And can't wait to see what you do next. And let's give Missy credit. She's the one that really runs all of this. 
Chaos and Cast, I just want to jump on and say congratulations on 10 years of this amazing podcast. Just wanted to say I don't have a favorite memory. I've had so many in the last 10 years with you guys, from being in the studio to being in the chat room to even just first meeting you guys over PodCamp 5. Yes. Missy, remember sitting in the back of the classroom laughing hysterically at my very first episode that I got to see of Awesome Cast. You have taken something so serious that could be filled with terabytes, megabytes, and technical jargon like that and made it so lighthearted and fun. And we've seen such great tech advances together from smartphones to robot dogs to light bulbs that turn on with the sound of our voice. From the A train going off all the time to Siri wondering what we were talking about. It has been an amazing 10 years. Thank you for everything. Congratulations. And here is to a gazillion more. There you go. Amanda, boldpgh.com. Thank you, everybody, for submitting those videos. Uh, Amanda, so when she went, when she was preparing that video, she shared a video. I don't know if you guys saw it. Of uh, 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 It was uh, PodCamp Pittsburgh 5. We're doing one of the live episodes, and uh, uh, I think Rob, it was you, me, and Chachi. And for what? And, and I'm I'm flipping through it. I'm kind of remembering it. And I remember Chachi kept like writing stuff on a piece of paper. I think to hold up during the show or something. Uh, so I <laughs> uh, had a good time there. Also, we still we had remember the 3D spinning cube in the corner. On, oh yeah, yeah. Because that was a that was a thing that Boinks TV could do before we moved the Wirecast. I was I missed the spinning cube, and I haven't found an efficient way to do that since that wouldn't crash the computer every once in a while. So, uh, <laughs> uh, good times there. I, I, uh, so, anyways, uh, back of the book here on the stories here. Hey, uh, before we get to WWC, I thought this was good. Uh, you know. Like I mentioned, we were kind of on a film set this this weekend, and a lot of people and and you may have seen some videos on some wrestling sites about some uh, prepared in nature uh, stuff that we've been doing uh, for COVID and testing and everything going into uh, uh, you know doing a shoot uh, for some pro wrestling this weekend. Uh, I I thought this was cool. So the this is uh, I think this is mostly suggested right now, um, but it's kind of a good idea. Uh, the NBA. Uh, plans to include using the aura ring uh, to catch COVID-19 symptoms. And this is something that I know we've talked about here on the show. Uh, so that could be helpful. It, of course, doesn't help out with asymptomatic, uh, asymptomatic cases. But, uh, and this is, I can't help you. may recall how much an aura ring is. I mean, that's nothing for the NBA to probably get for all their teams and everything, but. Probably expensive. Probably expensive. <laughs> my scientific estimate. What's that? Uh, let's see. It's my scientific estimate. I'm mm -hmm. clicking uh, $300. $300. So mm -hmm. I cannot get that for my indie wrestling roster. Got it. No. Uh, huh. <laughs> but it would be nice. Uh, I am, I'm hoping like the bigger companies will at least uh, look at things like this um, where appropriate, of course, and the rest of us will figure it out i guess so. <laughs> so um so do you know do you know what exactly the aura picks up like what just like heart rate and stuff isn't it heart rate temperature so it's that pretty much I, I assume it's using the same stuff that um several smartwatches use to monitor your your bio mm -hmm. it looks like it yeah, yeah it's using like that light yeah, that like yeah, that induction. So yeah. I feel like as much as it's a great headline, I, I feel like there's a much more realistic future in this rolling out to like Apple Watch and a bunch of other stuff. Like I, even if you have an after uh, an Apple Watch that reports in, maybe. Yeah, uh, exactly. Yeah, yeah. It, it you would have to release the kind of the the data or something like this. And there was a a mention in here from Zach Lowe, the N NBA team staff will not have any access to player data from the wearable rings. Uh, should a player actually choose to wear it? And this is this is a choice thing, which I think that kind of defeats the effectiveness uh, to do that. Uh, so we got one guy to wear it. <laughs> I have the there. We, yeah, it would, it would be interesting if you could actually like figure out who you want on your team based on their active heart rate their resting heart rate like Ooh. all kinds of all kinds of interesting metrics that you could pull off of 
your team and other teams to figure out. You start getting like a, a display at, uh, like on your iPad that's like, uh, you know, when you're watching those movies where um, like there's a, 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 a SEAL team that goes in and you have like heart rate monitor and everything on them. Re- most recently, I think I saw this on Doom. Uh, but, <laughs> you know, the monster kills them and you see everything flatline. Not that dramatic, but still you see like, oh man, oh man, Kobe, no, that's the wrong one. Uh, you know, uh, uh, I can't think of basketball players. I'm sorry. <laughs> that one basketball player. That one. That are, that are alive. Um, uh, the, <laughs> LeBron. Uh, LeBron, LeBron, thank you. you. That's a safe one. Movie. LeBron. The walking to the moon and you can see him dying because you're watching his vitals. It's like that, but yeah. basketball. Yeah, but with basketball. So. Um, yeah, exactly. You can see who's sleeping at night, when, how much they're sleeping. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, mm-hmm. you said you were in bed at such and such hour. No, you weren't. Oh, I see oh, you're oh. out here partying, so uh, we'll save you to the second string and see how things are going. Okay, <laughs> all right. Yeah, exactly. So, I, hey, it's it trying to work it in, and um, I guess if it's a pro thing, it has to be kind of streamlined, I guess. All right. Um, we talked about scary robot dogs last week. Which apparently Sony decided to, that means they needed to update their adorable, small, non-threatening robot dog, which will now greet you at the front door. So if you, if you, if you have the, uh, the Sony Ibo, which I think has been around for like 20 years in some form or fashion. It's, it's like, it's like the original robot dog. Yeah. So it, it, it you know, I, I think of this as your hypoallergenic how hyper hypoallergenic uh 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 option for having a dog that will greet you and give you companionship in these lonely times uh so yeah they did a software update and uh i guess you can um uh theoretically it, it's sort of a a uh, you set the waypoint for it to walk up to every time you open the door and say i'm home so uh my own dog doesn't do that so there you go <laughs> Well, time time to get a replacement. Yeah, <laughs> like I'm replacing it with a robot dog. Come on, and I don't have to clean up poop after it. Uh, oh man, definitely. There's a product of the future where you send a taxidermist an Ibo and your <gasps> dead dog. Oh no! <laughs> Can you put this in that? <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Oh no! WWDC. We're gonna find out what ours going on. I have nothing to segue. That's, that's it. Uh, that was the big announcement. This is the, um, um, I watched the, again, kind of the 18 minute super cut of it over on the verge. Cause I don't got time for that. Uh, <laughs> it, I don't know if, cause it wasn't live. I just did not care to watch it yesterday. Uh, it, and, and I feel like this is the first time in ages. I, I think even the iPhone, I didn't watch live. Right. Uh, like, I, I don't know if I'm, we're just turning the corner on it, but my Apple excitement is just like falling off. But, uh, yeah, yeah. I yeah. Uh, I used to watch every one of them live, and and I think it was the last two or three where like just like you, I used to be like, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna find. I'm gonna like schedule it. It's on my calendar. I'm gonna mm-hmm. watch this thing. And I'm like, I ah, I don't care. Yeah, I got other stuff to do. I get yeah. ex- I get excited for the ten month ten, ten minute supercut. Like, yeah, let's let's go for it. You know, um, I, I, well, I, I mean, I always had dreams of this show doing like you know the the you know twit Leo Laporte talk over stream you know kind of thing i was like nah nah that's not even worthwhile i even think there's there's anything i want to do that with it these days but uh either way um there was some interesting stuff of course the big big turn the officially (laughs) officially announced we're getting new chips and all of our macs in the in the near future there aren't based basically they look like they're uh from what i've seen so far correct me if i'm wrong guys uh these are going to be uh, uh, versions of chips we kind of already get in iPads. Um, of course, they're going to be higher end and more, more you know, made for the process, I'm sure. Um, very inventively, we're going to get Rosetta 2 <laughs> for can, making sure all of our apps work. And what's the other one that's a sequel? I can't remember the name of it right now. It, there was Rosetta and then there was, like, Rosetta was the, the, the software layer that I think emulated the old thing, the old like chip. Rosetta Two is emulating the Intel. Yes. It's for emulating to to get back to the Intel. I, I didn't hear what the other emulation was. There was a there's another process, but uh, all your apps, like all your iOS apps, or if you're on the developer side, you can convert over pretty easily. Um, I'm just waiting for them to just drop the where's my touchscreen 
Mac. You're going to drop me like the iOS apps. Come on. Like, let's well, just. Well, I mean, the like, transition here is that you can now, you'll now be able to run all your iOS apps on your Mac. Mm-hmm. So it's less that your, your, you know, iPad is going to run Mac apps in that Mac apps just aren't going to exist anymore and you're just going to have apps and they're all going to be the same. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then, I mean, you figure you brought the mouse and keyboard over to the iPad and, and whatnot. Yeah. So now you now you've moved the interfaces and the the inputs bi-directionally. Yeah, it's all the same. What, yeah. what what I what I thought was interesting is they definitely didn't highlight the uh, getting rid of Boot Camp. So oh, no, no more running. No more running Windows on your Mac. No, wait a minute. So, but Windows has an ARM version, don't they? But yeah, but I'm guessing they're not going to spend the time to make sure that works right <laughs> and build drivers and everything else. Yeah, yeah, I don't think that's in their best interest. <laughs> no, 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 not at this point, I guess. All right, all right, all right. All right. Uh, we'll see how that goes. Again, it's a. I think they said two years out. No, they said the transition would take two years, and they are still going to be putting out lines of Intel Max in the time being. Like, like there's still new models of Intel Max coming. So. Oh, take that for what you will. Um, anything, uh, Katie? Have you seen? Uh, have you seen any of the iOS or phone updates? Uh, widgets, widgets, wi- widgets, widgets. Wi- wi- you were excited about widgets too, apparently. <laughs> I was. That's the only thing I, I missed from mm-hmm. my uh, Android phone were widgets, and now we're oh, getting widgets. That's right. You were a trans. Ten thousand years later. <laughs> <laughs> we technically got them on iPad, though, right? Yeah, true. So, like, technically, not as functional. As these are going to be, mm-hmm. uh, but uh, the exciting, <laughs> the exciting thing is that uh, you can move them around and stuff. Yeah, like I say exciting, uh, but <laughs> so exciting! <laughs> I can put my weather app wherever I want, uh, <laughs> or my stocks or whatever. But uh, uh, it, <laughs> um, I actually I am kind of excited because you know I do have I'm a big phone guy, right? And uh, I, I like in Facebook that I can pull a video in the corner and just keep Facebooking. Um, mostly the same thing with YouTube, um, mm-hmm. except YouTube is just other videos. So it's just kind of finding the next one. I like that that's like a purely functional thing across the phone now. Mm-hmm. Um, they were, the, the one thing I was listening to today was like uh, kind of poo-pooing that. I was like, who would do that? I was like, hi, I'll do that. <laughs> uh, you know, maybe if I don't have, if I have the smallest phone. But I mean, there's so much real estate on this. Like, yeah, you can just throw that in the corner and still going through Facebook, going through Twitter, like, you know, doing the more casual thing, right? It, it makes a lot of sense. And they were watching Mythic Quest in the uh, in the example. So it all it all kind of works together. Hopefully it's more than just the ingrained Apple ones. But, uh, you know, we'll see how you can throw works. the You can throw Mandalorian in the bottom corner of your uh, X, X-Play or X-Cloud gaming and... That's Just Android. Keep on playing and playing and playing. Well, I guess that would be coming over. So that would be. I mean, yeah, that would be yeah, coming over eventually. So. I don't know, but so I don't. Would it? I guess I'm surprised. I'm surprised at how many kids I see playing on an iPad, playing Minecraft on an iPad with um, Disney Plus streaming in the corner. Huh. Hmm. Yeah. So it's and they, a, they could they could care less about having a TV on or anything else. Just give them a little picture in picture thumbnail, and they'll watch whatever while they play whatever else. If the screen is a foot from your face, it doesn't matter how big it is, right? Yep. In the long run. So, um, I feel like I feel like attaching to the idea that I want to watch this thing on my forty-two inch television in my living room is like my old hang on like people that want to still have their stuff on disc technologically wise, but maybe not an apples, maybe an apples and oranges, but you get what I'm saying there. Like, like the, I like the idea of something on my television versus something on my iPad, which is still like 10 inches and this far away from me. But, um, anyways, pinning your text is Amanda's favorite on there. Um, Potter's pointing out that yeah, transition two years to new uh, Max. Um, How about when I get a phone call, it no longer takes over the entire interface. That's kind of nice. If, if it does that with <laughs> if it does that with Facebook and Google calls, I'll be good too. So, but uh, yeah, that's that was long, long needed. Um, car key 
unlocks your car with your iPhone. Of course, very select phones, but you know. and select cars. And select cars. <laughs> select cars. Select phones. Select cars. You can't afford. It's fine. Everything's fine. Yeah, yeah, it's great. <laughs> Maybe we'll see it in like five, like ten years. Um, I will say uh, on that um, there is. Uh, there's this idea people have in their head where they're like, oh, I bought a new uh, new car. It means it's really hard to steal. And it's not um, because the dumb dongles that we use um, on mm. keyless entry and, and all that stuff, um, they're exceptionally easy to uh, spoof and copy and all that fun stuff. So the one thing, as much as I kind of hate this as like a, a dumb side feature that seems expensive and there's a bunch of other like, Android versus iOS, and if I have a BMW, do I does it like what phone do I need to have? And that that all feels a little kludgy. Um, the benefit of not having to carry that dumb little dongle is great, unless you lock yourself out of your car. Problem um, creates problems with security on your phone. If somebody steals your phone, can then they, now they can steal your car. Um, <laughs> but, they have access to your wallet. Yeah, and they have access. To, yeah, now they steal your phone, and they have access to literally your entire life. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But and uh, and and, a, and they can see if your garage door is open. And they can see if your garage door is open. And if it isn't, they can open it <laughs> <laughs> and park your car for you. And they can park your car in your garage. They just subsume your life through your phone. Um, but it would be very interesting because there hasn't been a big push for increasing the security of the dongle that you're using on your car Mm -hmm. uh, for keyless entry. Um, If this is a way to get us into more secure keyless entry um, and keyless start, that would be very interesting. Nice. Nice. Well, we'll see. I mean, yeah, please, please, if you're using all this stuff, please make sure you do have like code and face ID and stuff. <laughs> I'm still astonished when I run into people that don't have that. Sorry, mom. Uh, <laughs> I think I did make her put that on eventually too. So uh, to make sure, I mean, who's going to steal our phone, but you know, you never know. So mm-hmm. yeah, I'm about and stuff like that. So anyways, uh, speaking of, we have one last video that is sight unseen. Oh, I shouldn't be doing this. Uh, Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> um, I was sent this during the show, and I, I did say I had one more special one, and and we she has been a part of the show one way or another and is in the chat room almost every week here. Plus, there's that time where we're trying to figure out what the birdhouses were in her photo that we thought were an icon on her phone for some reason with at and Uh-huh. <laughs> Uh-huh. I go, I go and just ponder those birdhouses every time I go and visit now. I'm like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And she's like, why are you looking at my birdhouses? He's like, because I remember. Um, but anyways, uh, yes, here's a message, apparently, from my mother. Okay, it's your mother saying congratulations, but I guess it's too late to turn it in. So congratulations from your mother on your awesome cast. There you go. <laughs> no matter what, you could always add it in post. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, I expected. I expected that. There might be some in my mailbox I haven't seen, and if they are, we'll play those now. And if we didn't, there was just an awkward pause there, and we'll move on. Uh, <laughs> Rob De La Creta, thank you so much again. Where can people uh, uh, check out the uh, awesome stuff that you're working on? Um, you can go to iontank.com to see the kind of stuff uh, that we build. Uh, you can look uh, you can look at our Instagram uh, where I post uh, pictures of things that you uh, ideally won't be able to identify because uh, I would violate contracts if, if you could. Um, <laughs> you can also find me on Instagram at uh, robjdlc. Uh, I don't use Twitter, and that's pretty much it. There you go. All right, thank you, thank you so much for coming on. We'll see you in another hundred episodes. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. See you. Uh, you know. Well, I mean, at this rate, uh, the world won't be left by the time we get to another. That's 100. true. That's true. So. That's true. Well, I, and of course, I know you're bored at home. So, uh, if yeah, obviously uh, uh, you're 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 invited on whenever you feel to come back and uh, and and chat too. Uh, Katie, you are Hi. you you are in your last week. Yeah, last week of chemo Friday. Yes. Final round. Strangely, they added three days to it. Good. Thank, yeah. Thanks. Thanks for that. <laughs> I was going to be more dramatic. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, excellent. And of course, people can follow what's uh, uh, updates with you and everything going on over at uh, Instagram, Kate Marie PGH. That's the best place to go. There you go. There you go. <laughs> 
party hat and all. Thank you so yep. much. Yep, party cat, space cat. <laughs> wait, are those? Wait, is that a leftover party hat from when we went up to Rob's for a an impromptu birthday lunch? No, these are different. These were, I think, these were slightly fancier than oh, okay. the one. So we <laughs> the string stays in them. They're secure. Oh yeah, that was they did not work out this, very this well. This is a little bit more than the dollar we store. We discovered we all have big heads. Uh, Chilla. That's me, John Chilla on the Facebooks, Chilla on the Twitters. I'm still on the Twitters on occasion. And I'm sorry, they're bird feeders, not bird houses. They just look like houses. The bird, That's why I get confused. They did look like bird houses. They were, yeah, yeah. Because I'm like, what is this house? They're, they're covert. It, they're look, covert it looks feeders. all they, animated. They, like it's, a th- oh, it was so, they, so. They trick the birds into thinking they're going to have a home, but all they have is something to eat. Oh, I should have filmed the reactions when we realized what was going on up there. <laughs> I looked over, I'm like, wait a minute. Uh, anyways, thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody that's been uh, a part of this show, supported the show uh, over the last 10 years. Uh, it's 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 awesome that that this is still going and, and the ten years really creeped up on me to be honest. Um, but our anniversary, I guess, usually does around here. Uh, but uh, thank you everybody for being a part of it. You have been our awesome audience, and thank you for an awesome ten years. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.